Hi, welcome to the fourth part of the C++ guide for JavaScript developers. I'm Oscar, and today we're going to be talking about pointers. Now, once again, I'm just kind of going through the topics that I wrote on the written version of the guide. It's available on Gumroad, and the link will be in the description. But let's just jump into the topic. Now, I have a very basic program programming here. I just have a variable of type integer and I'm outputting it to the console. Now, what is a pointer? A pointer is a memory address. That is the most basic definition of it. And whenever you talk about pointers, you have to set your mind in this mode where you're talking about memory. So, how do we get the memory address of a variable? we have to use a special operator. So here in my program, I'm going to modify the output and I'm going to use the ampersand operator ahead of my variable. If I run this, now I can see I get a different output, which is a hexadecimal number. It starts with the 0x. And it's just on the very first look, a random number. This random number means or is the random address where this variable is located. It's just as simple as that. A pointer is the first memory address of the variable. Now, you can store a pointer variable if we use the asterisk notation ahead of the variable and I'm just going to take the address of my original variable and here I'm going to output that pointer and you can see it's a different number but still a memory address. So you might be thinking if a pointer is this hexadecimal number, why does it need to have a type in here? And that is because depending on the architecture of your processor, of your operating system, etc., etc., you need to reconstruct the data somehow, right? So on most modern machines, integers are 32 bits. That means they are four bytes. So if you imagine your computer's memory address as a big array, here you have, for example, memory address number one, memory address number two, etc., etc. right? Each one of these, depending again on um, the memory and how your operating system works, this is probably one byte, right? Each one of these is one byte and so on and so forth. But if we said that our integer is four bytes, that means that these four continuous addresses, they all represent one integer, right? All of these four, you need to reconstruct or you need to read the bits on all of these four memory addresses to reconstruct one integer. Therefore, that's why it's not only necessary to know the first address, you also need to know until when do you need to read the memory to reconstruct the original value that you're looking for. So, I know that was very fast, but uh, don't worry about it, as we go talking as we go exploring different topics you will get a better feeling about pointers right for now the most basic concept that you need to know and you won't get confused is a pointer is a memory address so now i want to talk about another topic that uses pointers which are pass by value and pass by reference so i'm just going to revert this back for a little bit and 
I'm gonna create a function. I'm just gonna call it sum four, and it's gonna take an integer as a parameter, and it's gonna return the argument plus four. Very simple, right? So I'm gonna create just some output for us to check. I'm gonna call my function, and it indeed returns 27, which is correct. Now, let's think a bit how the memory is being managed right now for us. If I go inside this function and I decide to rewrite the value of the argument, then you can see the output is correct, but if I output my original variable in the main scope of my program, in the main function, it hasn't changed. That is because this function is a function operated on pass by value. Now, pass by value is automatically applied for me on the basic types, right? Integers, doubles, booleans, any simple data that the compiler knows how to copy, it will copy for me. If you come from the JavaScript world, you're also familiar with this. Whenever you pass the simple references, integers and so on, you're passing by value, not by reference. Um, but the main difference is on the C++ world, you can actually, or you have to be a lot more deliberate and more, a little bit more conscious on when you pass by reference. So I'm gonna create another function. I'm gonna call it sum4, and it's going to be the dangerous version of sum4. And you're gonna see in a, in a little bit why. It's also going to take an integer, but this time I'm going to ask for the memory address of the argument. Here, first, I'm also going to return plus four, but I'm going to do the same. I'm going to change the value again of the argument. And let's see what happens if I change this into the dangerous call. First, my variable starts with the original value, then the function gets executed, but you can see when I output it again, the value has changed. That is because I am now using a pass by reference, right? So this is where pointers really show their power. Since you're dealing with the memory on a much lower level, it's a lot more dangerous, it's a lot more powerful because you can actually modify shared values inside of your program. So there are a lot more topics that we could go in here, um, but this should be enough for you to get the rough feeling of how pointers modify memory. Next, we will go into strings. Strings are also a very interesting um, class in C++, but they have a equivalent that goes down into memory management and pointers itself. For now, I don't want you to get too confused. Um, this should be enough knowledge for now, so we can continue to the next lessons. Uh, thanks a lot, and please consider subscribing.